Brother Mark's going to be coming preaching for us here in just a few minutes. But before he does, you know, I've told y'all that we didn't get to where we are overnight. Yeah. Right? And uh, so I started reading this book. Uh, and in the forward to the book, written by a preacher about the preacher that uh, uh, the book of the book, here's the second paragraph he says about the preacher. He says, perhaps no man has ever lived that preached the gospel that was more genuine, genuinely loved by some and more genuinely hated by others. He was despised by those that did not believe that the Bible was the inspired, infallible, holy Word of God. He was modernism's deadly enemy. He never offered any quarters to the liberals nor asked any quarters. He was never afraid to deal individually or collectively with an issue. It mattered not to him if it was a local church or if it was a great denomination. He spoke his peace and declared what he deemed to be the truth. No man could produce fear in his heart, not even the devil could scare him. Amen. I want you to notice what it said. He was despised by those that did not believe that the Bible was the inspired and fallible holy word of God. Yeah. And then I got a few pages in the book. <laughs> and this, uh, man, I tell you, now this is one of my heroes. Amen. This fella, in self-defense, shot a man in his office and killed him. Yeah. That's how hated he was. But I was really enjoying reading the book and, and just run along so well. And he says this, I say that it is all from God to man, going on, uh, going on to, for his great love wherewith he loved us. What else? Even when we were dead in sins, it's quickened us together with Christ by grace you're saved. So you know he's in Ephesians chapter 2. And it raised us up. Could you raise yourself up? We were dead. Could we get up ourselves? No. God took the casket lid off our souls and said, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Take up thy bed and walk. The bed where the sin sick should lay. It is mercy that says that, and we go on our way rejoicing. What else? Raised us up together and made us. Literally caused us to sit together. Where? On thrones. No. George saw the king of Sweden the other day when he was in Sweden. I thought, what does it matter? Thanks be unto God, we will all see the king someday. The king of kings and lord of lords who made us sit together in heavenly places. Who did that? I didn't climb up and get that seat. God gave us a front seat. What else? In Christ Jesus. Well, it's running along real well. It has been in the, in, in the first part of the message. Just, just going along so well. And then. But we didn't get here overnight. What else? Here's something else. I want you to notice that word for by grace. Okay? Now you know what verse he's referring to. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God. That's 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 in his text. So he says. What else? Here's something else. I want you to notice that that word for by grace, that little word for means because. I took the Bible the other day and ran through a lot of phrases. John 3, 16, for God so loved. That word for, literally translated, should be because. No. Uh-oh. Man, he just changed, he changed the whole doctrine right there. Yeah. He changed the whole meaning. Of John 3.16. Yeah. The reason being is because means by cause or by the cause or on this account. That's all that because means. Because doesn't mean anything else. Okay? So, I took the Bible the other day and ran through a lot of phrases. John 3.16, for God is so loved. That word for, literally translated, should be because, for it comes from the original Greek word, because. Mm. Can I tell you there, an, there is not an original Greek word because, because is an English word. Amen. Amen. 
You know, about right here, I'm, I'm just, I'm devastated. I mean, I've been running away. <clears throat> and I'm not the smartest uh, person on the planet, but, but without even looking the two words up, I know in my heart and in my mind that for and because are not the same two words. No. There, there's, a, there's a vast difference in the two words. And so then he goes on and says this, because God so loved. Now, now stay with me a minute because I'm going to show you something. Because God so loved, why are we saved? Why are we raised? Because by grace. That's why. Because by grace. Not for by grace, but because by grace. And he goes on and says this. I'll give you another case where the word because should be used. The last verse of the fifth chapter of 2 Corinthians for, because, change for now, because he hath made him to be sin for us. No, for he hath made him to be sin for us. Not because. Amen. Yeah. Okay. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Let me give you another example. A great scripture that has been the comfort of innumerable saints. Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them who are called according to His purpose. For, in the next verse, that should read, because whom He did foreknow. So not for whom He did know, but because whom He did foreknow. He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. That's why all things work together because there's an overlasting, overlasting foundation under God's unchanging purpose. Well, it's got an unchanging word. Yeah. Yeah. I could go on and give you many examples where the word because should be used. Well, his hero status went way to the bottom of me today. Why? Well... <laughs> Because God so loved the world, He gave His only God, <laughs> Son, that whosoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Because, by cause, by what cause? Because the serpent was lifted up in the wilderness? Don't think so. That's the text. It's part of the text. Yeah, amen. Not the serpent in the wilderness. That's right. Right? Yeah. Yep. And. By the cause, or on, on this account, because that servant was lifted up in the wilderness for the children of Israel? I don't think so. The word for. Lengthy definition in your 1828 dictionary, but I'm going to give you what applies to the verses that he's, he has applied to. The radical sense of for is to go, to pass, to advance, to reach, or to stretch. For God so loved. All of those apply. But then you look more specifically into the definition and it's this. In the place of. Instead of. Noting substitution of persons. Or agency of one in the place. Of another. Not because the serpent was lifted up in the wilderness for the nation of Israel hundreds of years prior, but for God so loved the world that He gave. Right. Yeah. That for starts the very doctrine itself. God has given Himself the substitute in my place, in your place, through His Son, the Lamb of God. Amen. I can't shout on what he was preaching on, but I can shout on what the King James translator said. Amen. Amen. And then the word for means in exchange of, noting one thing taken or given in place of another. And that's exactly what God did. Yeah. For God so loved the world, for God so loved me and you, that he exchanged <clears throat> punishment and penalty. And He put His Son in place that you and I could be justified with Him. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
Amen. Hello? Amen. So anyway, that's what I'm telling you. Whenever, uh, whenever we have a library downstairs and you start reading through a book because I told you I can't read them all. When you come to stuff like this, uh, write it down, page number and paragraph, uh, so I can go back and look at it. I mean, this, this devastated me today. It really did. You say, well, what if that's the only time? I don't think it's the only time he did it in his ministry, but this is how it started years ago. One correction at a time. Changing one. Man, that's the... Listen, listen. Redemption is that scarlet thread that leads right. from Genesis to Revelation. Yep. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And he's trying to, was trying to preach to the congregation about the fact that salvation was not by us, but it was by him. Well, that's not what he just did here. Yeah. So, yeah, I just, you know, I don't know what Brother Mark's going to preach on tonight, but, you know, I thought I might already just <coughs> get that while, while we get this good. Go on. Words are so important. I've told you over and over again, all you have to do is change one word. You change the entire doctrine. You yep. change the yep. entire meaning. Yep. And, that, and just this one word. And so he's trying to tell me and you that the, the majority of the times that the word for is used in the New Testament, that it should not have been for, but it should have been because. How many, how many doctrines and how much are you going to mess up the context? Throughout all of the New Testament, when you do that, Amen. Sometimes when you're we're just doing your devotion and you come to the word for, uh, try to exchange the word because, yeah. and, and then see what he's done with inside the context of that chapter that you're reading. Now, see, he's just taught his people. He taught his people to do that. Here's yeah. a man pastor two of the largest churches in America at the same time. He flew back and forth pastoring both churches. This is how it started yep. in our pulpits right here. Amen? Tragic, tragic, tragic. What'd you do when you come to that? Well, I just shut the book. I was, I was aggravated at that point. I just said, well, I might try to pick it up and, and glean something out of it tomorrow, but today I'm upset. Amen. Yeah. Should be. Today I'm just aggravated. Just uh, what he did. Right there. Amen.